What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about what exactly was the Techno Union, and how did it go from being an integral part of the Republic's economy and politics to the backbone of the CIS? Part of the explanation is right in their name, as it was a union formed amongst various tech companies. Back on Earth, we tend to think of tech companies as things that deal with computer software, but this union included droid, vehicle, and ship manufacturers, all sorts of different high-tech machinery. Its founders realized that the major tech companies were not benefiting from the model put in place by the Trade Federation. This federation was able to provide a forum where companies involved in galactic trade could voice their grievances with each other and or the local and republic's government's regulations. Each company had representatives sit on the Trade Federation board, and by letting them work out issues together, they didn't have to grant the government more power to regulate them, while simultaneously creating an enormous lobby that could fight for trade interest in the Senate. If some law being proposed could hurt the companies in this federation, the member companies could just raise the prices of goods being sold to that senator's world, and put credits towards slicers that could dig up some dirt on this senator, or put credits towards a public campaign to move the general opinion against this new law. Around 300 BBY, 50 years after the Trade Federation was established, the new union of tech companies would grow to have this power as well. By around 30 BBY, Wat Tambor rose to become the foreman, the leader of the Techno Union, which had its base of operations on his home planet of Skako Minor. Nearly all of the major companies were in at this point, and on this list you can see names that were crucial to the Republic, like Corellia Engineering Corporation, who made the Gazanti class, Blast Tech Industries, who made most of the clones' weapons, Kuat Drive Yards, who provided the capital ships and vehicles, as well as Republic Sinar, who made the Star Courier. Watt's background was as an engineer and executive officer at Bactoid Armor Workshop, originally a Trade Federation company, but which moved over to the Techno Union after the Battle of Naboo. The company's Bactoid Armor Workshop and Bactoid Combat Automata would end up providing most of the droids and vehicles for the CIS, while these other companies filled crucial roles as well. The Colicoid Creation Nest provided some of the more elite droids like the Droidica and Scorponek, while Arachid Industries provided the deadly probes and assassin droids. How Charl Engineering would give the CIS its main fighters like the Vulture and Tri-Droid, and like we talked about in the Kuat Drive Yards video that you can check out by clicking on this card, it is interesting to wonder what would have happened if these three companies didn't leave the Techno Union. Palpatine was only able to fracture this union by making it seem like the other representatives were okay with killing Kawadi delegates, something that gravely insulted the noble shipbuilders that had been a dominant figure in the galaxy since the time of the Old Republic. Though war was nearing, Watt Tambor was confident that he still had the upper hand and that all his pieces had already been moved into place. Years before, the Techno Union had acquired the entire planet of Seleucami with intent on turning it into another mech world, while they already had ownership of the prestigious Foros shipyards, which were large enough to rival Kuat's. Because of this massive amount of capital, the Republic allowed the Techno Union to have 40,000 battle droids in order to protect it all from pirates, while also allowing the Republic to lease out parts of the shipyard. The Techno Union also gave generous donations to Fondor Academy of Engineering and Design, a Republic Academy that would end up making the bulk of engineers that worked for the tech companies in the Union. When the Republic wanted to tax the Outer Rim and put regulations into place to try and make core worlds more competitive, the secessionist movement began. The member worlds of the Techno Union were some of the first to go, and with their diverse production expertise, they were able to provide the starfighters and droids needed to wage a war. Luckily for the CIS, the Mune bankers were willing to sell them ships to keep this profitable war going for as long as possible, while new allies like the Quarren produced the Providence class and Subjugator class. The Union carried out this role throughout the Clone Wars, Watt had an idea for a new unit that was neither droid nor organic. Watt's new fighter would be both, based on seeing how proficient Grievous was on the battlefield. His template would be off of the Morgukai, elite Nikto warriors, that were cloned in massive facilities located deep underground. These Separatist clones would also be augmented by cybernetic enhancements, but this tech could also act as a sort of kill switch. It let the cyborgs have some of the critical thinking benefits seen in clones, while still having the potential to shut them down like droids. After Wat Tambor and other CIS leaders were slaughtered by Darth Vader, the member companies of the Techno Union became property of Palpatine's new empire. So that's it for the Techno Union and the role it played in the Clone Wars. If you want to connect with us, help support this channel, or get your own copies of the reference material used in this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our Patreons, 
And be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, or click on one of these end cards to see our other videos. But most important of all, remember, it's hard to vote yes when all of your citizens work in the Techno Union. And the Force will be with you, always.